What is your school mascot and your school colors? Our school mascot is a bear. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, a bear and we call it a ranger. So we're the Drew Rangers. And our school colors are blue and green. Did you hear me okay? Yep, that was perfect. How okay. did that become your mascot? Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> I might have to do some research on that and get back to you. I guess it's because everybody at Drew is, uh, you know, when they take the sports field, they're just like a bear. We try to plow through everybody. Now, how um, does your bear have a name, your ranger? Um, well, I think we just call him the Drew Ranger. Oh, the Drew Ranger. Okay, good. Go ahead, Joe. How many students attend your school? We have 1,700 undergrads, so 1,700 undergraduates. Perfect. That's actually one of our smallest schools we've interviewed so, so far. Are you guys considered a small school or a medium-sized school? We're a smaller school, more of a highly personalized experience. You know, you get to know all of your teachers personally, so it's, it's really fun. Yeah, we've talked to a few schools that have upwards of 50,000 students in them, and it's wow. nice to hear that. I mean, we're, we're a very small town. Our high school only graduates about 90 to 100 kids every year. So, you know, going from here to Drew might be something that would be a seamless transition for these guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. How big are your class sizes? So with 1,700 students, how big are your class sizes? Mm -hmm. um, well, an average class is going to be about 17 kids. So, I, and I was a student here, so I can tell you, you know, typically if sometimes you get into smaller classes, so you have only 10 people in a class. Um, and occasionally you have a class that's maybe 20 or 25 people, but typically it's about 17 kids. Which is actually uh, the exact size of this class right now. So if you went to Drew, when you took classes there, your class sizes would be about exactly the same as it is now. So as much attention as you get from me and Ms. Joslin and all the other teachers, you'd have that same amount of attention when you went to Drew. Absolutely. Now, this is always a big question for the kids. How far are you guys from home, from us here in Keensburg? Keensburg. We're in Monmouth uh -huh. County, right along uh, the Bay Shore there, near Sandy Hook. Hold on one second. I actually, got to be honest with you, I grew up in North Carolina, so <laughs> I'm not sure. I think you're about, i tell you what, can I answer that question in about five minutes? Yeah, of course. Okay. Go ahead, Ariana. So what types of things are there to do on Drew's campus and then around in the town of Madison itself? Oh, so many things. So in the town of Madison, my favorite thing is that we have a lot of food places. We've got any kind of food you can think of. We've got a great ice cream place. Uh -huh. It has the best milkshakes ever. Um, but also you can walk to the train station and go into New York City. So you can see plays, you can get pizza, you can go to art museums. It's really fantastic. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's one thing, too. That, can, that, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I can tell you a little bit about campus activities, too, if you want. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So on campus, we have over 90 student clubs. So there's always students trying to do things on campus. There's always cultural clubs where they're putting up food to represent a different region of the world. You're learning about different cultures. Um, there's dances. We have huge games of campus-wide tag that's called Humans versus Zombies. So some people get on, get to be on Team Humans, some people get to be on Team Zombie, um, and you get to play all day uh, in between class. Um, yeah, so it really depends on whatever you want to do, you can do here. We've got sports, um, and we've got, let's see if I'm missing anything. Do you have like uh, intramurals? We do. We have intramural sports, and we play in Division Three. Um, like when I was here, I played street hockey <laughs> on an intramural team. Um, we also have rugby. We have ultimate frisbee, um, and we have a cappella groups. So if you like to sing, you can just walk around and sing all the time. Yeah. What that? What the intramurals is? Is let's say you guys go away to college, and, and maybe you're not good enough to play on the actual college level team. What you could do is you can get a group of your friends together at school and start your own intramural team and play against other students on your campus instead of playing against other schools uh, instead. 
Absolutely. Go ahead, Ariana. Now let me ask you this. Drew is probably not too far from us, so I guess we could probably come home on the weekends, but are there students there on the weekends? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, and in fact, I just, I can tell you, you're about 40, 45 miles from us. Oh, so that's so less than an hour. Less than an hour drive, which is nice. So that's close <laughs> enough where if you wanted to come home, maybe do some laundry, get a nice home-cooked meal, you can go home. Oh, but yeah. you're far but, um, enough away where I, you can stay I can there. tell you, most students, though, uh, usually you want to kind of stay and hang out with your friends on the weekends. Uh, as a student who lived really far away when I was here, it is nice because your friends will take you home sometimes and feed you. But um, a lot of kids stay around because we have so many activities every weekend. We have theater productions, so we have students putting on plays on campus. We have all the music groups I told you about. We have all the sports teams playing. And then on top of that, you get so many student clubs putting up little festivals and parties all around campus where you can walk around from table to table, eat cotton candy, face paint. Um, sometimes we put out posters and you can paint on the posters. So there's a lot of things going on. So pretty much if you're at, if you attend Drew University and you're there on the weekends, you're not going to be sitting in your dorm room doing nothing. That's 100% true. You're going to be out and about. Um, and in fact, when it's really sunny and it gets, starts getting warm out, because, you know, it does snow for a while here. Uh, <laughs> when it gets really sunny, people just start putting out, like, blankets and lying out on the grass and playing Frisbee and, you know, making popcorn in the microwave and bringing it outside and all sorts of things. Excellent. So. John Paul? Um, what? what So you said you had uh, Division Three sports. So what types yes. of sports are offered at Drew? Um, so we have lots of teams. Wow. Uh, we've got our tennis team. They're really good. Our swim team is really good. Our baseball team is really good. They won this weekend twice, I think. Um, we've got a lacrosse team for women. We've got a softball team, um, field hockey. Oh, let's see. Wow, I can keep going. Um, we have a fencing team if you like to sword fight. We have equestrian team, if you like horses. Um, we have a cross-country team. Um, soccer for women and for men. Yeah, soccer is great, right? <laughs> um, oh, let's see what I'm missing. Basketball. Of course we have basketball. Um, and then, you know, there's also teams that aren't part of our Division Three sports that still travel. So we have rugby, which is kind of like football, um, but a little more British. So we have rugby for men and for women. We have a frisbee team, like I said, if you like throwing around a frisbee. Um, I'm trying to think if I miss any sports teams. Now I have a question. Let's say you are, um, you've never fenced before and you come to Drew. Would you have the opportunity maybe to try out for fencing, even though you weren't maybe recruited to come and fence for it? It's, uh, it's yes, fun. yes. Um, and I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if all the teams work this way, but I know some of them do. Um, fencing is one of them. If you've never held a sword before, you can still walk on, and the, the coach will, will take you and coach you all year. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any rivals? Do you guys have any rival schools? Oh, wow. I think that changes sport to sport. So that would probably be a question for some of our sports teams. Because um, we're in the Landmark Conference. Um, but yeah, I mean, and some of our teams don't 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 go to games just with the schools in our conference. For example, the fencing team, the rival, their rivals would probably be Chapel Hill or one of the other northern schools, maybe Vassar or another school, because they don't only fence against schools that are in the region. They fence against a lot of Division One schools as well. Oh, wow. So it, it does change sport to sport depending on who you are. Um, but if you want a list, I could email you a list, Jesse, when we're done. Perfect. I know I know. Uh, Fairly Dickinson is up there. I wasn't sure if Fairly Dickinson was one of your rivals. They uh, they are. That's more of a club thing, I think, almost. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, because um, we're so close to each other. I would say uh, not always in sports, but... Certainly, in student life, we try to be, we try to have more interesting, you know, club activities and festivals. That was something we found out from a lot of schools was they not only have sports rivals, but they either have academic or just proximity rivals between oh, different yes. schools. <laughs> That's actually yes. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs>
Go ahead, uh, John Paul. Does your school have any uh, traditions? Traditions. Do you have any traditions at Drew? Oh, wow. Um, we have one that we started just recently that's going to be great in a few years. Um, when you come to Drew, there's a candlelight ceremony where um, you are given a pin as a freshman and something you can wear on your shirt or a hat or a jacket or a you know, backpack. And, um, and you know, the, the head of the students um, says a few words and all of the upperclassmen are there and their candles are lit and then they light your candle. So it's kind of like they're passing your experience and their knowledge on to you. So as a freshman, you get to participate. But then as a senior, you get to come back before you leave and light the candles of the students who are going to take over for you at the school. So it's really fun and it's really touching. Um, and see, we also have some more unorthodox ones. Um, like, uh, with, before you graduate, there's, you do a white party. Everybody dresses up in white and white dresses and white suits and white ties or, uh, or white t-shirts if you're casual. And all of the seniors get to uh, celebrate heading off into the world as, you know, people who have never really had jobs before and you know, going into it kind of open and fresh and ready for everything. I like the, uh, the ceremony you have at Convocation there, and it seems that a lot of the schools that we've talked to, uh, a lot of their traditions revolve around that Convocation ceremony that's mm -hmm. starting when, when those freshmen come in, you know, whether it be you can't walk over a certain seal or walk under a certain arch or whatever it is, some, some, sort, some sort of mythical lore about the school, but that, you know, having that ability to come and be a senior your last year in the school and then kind of welcome in that new group of students that comes in. That's a really kind of nice tradition to have over at Drew. Absolutely. And, you know, there are a few others, but they're not, you know, maybe official traditions. Like we have ghosts. We have ghosts at Drew. So I don't know if those scare you, but we do have a few floating around. Um, <laughs> let's see. So there's, you know, the students have their own sets of, of traditions. Like, Excellent. you know, doing the ghost walk and getting to see all the places where the ghosts live. What is Drew best known for? Ooh, um, we're really well known for theater. We have some of the best college theater in the country. So if you ever want to see a play, you just have to come here on campus and watch one. Um, let's see. We have great political science and psychology. Psychology is a really big major here. Um, and we're really well known for our experiential learning. So that's kind of like... You go off campus and you get to do really exciting things in the real world with what you're learning about in the classroom. So some students travel into New York City twice a week um, to take classes from our professors and then they go out and do something really cool in the afternoons in the city. So you can do that for art, for example. You can go into the city and see art museums and galleries and meet with studio artists. If you're interested in politics, you can go to the UN which is a center for political officials from all over the world. And you can go and sit in on amazing conferences and listen to China, talk to Korea. And um, if you're interested in business, you get to go to Wall Street. Have any of you guys ever seen those movies with the guys in the green jackets who are yelling at the stock market with the tickets in their hands? Yeah, so if you're interested in business, you get to go into the city and walk around with those guys for a whole day and experience their life. It's kind of similar to what I did when I was going into education, where your whole end of your school schooling in college is uh, you're in the classroom learning how hands-on to become a teacher. So it sounds like Drew really kind of gives you that opportunity of whatever career path that you're going into to allow you to get out there early and really experience what that job is like to make sure that that's something you really want to go into. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and you can do that for anything. You know, we've got internships all over New York City and locally, and, um, and your internship doesn't always have to line up with what you're learning about, you know, so you can learn about whatever you want to, music or anything, and then go work a job in something that really interests you. Excellent. Riley? Why do people choose to come to Drew? Wow, so many reasons. Um, the faculty is a number one. So do you guys like your teacher? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> well, so. that's a really good reason to come to Drew. All of our teachers are really friendly people. They're really, really smart. Um, and they love to sit down and chat with us. They love to have coffee with us and talk to us about their life experiences and what we can do with our life. 
And it's just so wonderful. I knew all of my teachers personally, and they're all great people. And, um, and you know, sometimes they even bring their kids to class, and you get to meet their kids. No, but uh, that's a great reason to come to Drew. You're going to get to know your faculty really, really well. I think another, uh, another so. big appealing reason is the size. I think that especially yeah. if you're coming from a small town or a small district, maybe, you know, a school with 30,000 people isn't the right place for you. And Drew, having, you know, under 2,000 students might be something that's more appealing. It might make you feel more comfortable when you come to school. Definitely. Definitely. And, you know, another reason, the campus is beautiful. Do you guys like going outside and playing in the sun? Yeah. Yeah. yeah our campus is gorgeous. We have so many trees and we have lots of animals. We've got all these deer that come at night and just stand around and look really silly. And we have a whole lot of hawks. Like a lot of birds flying around everywhere and a lot of squirrels. So. Good. Go ahead, Riley. How big is your campus? So how big is your campus at Drew? Oh, you know, I don't know the acreage. But how, <laughs> we, how long would it take to walk from one side? It to takes the about, yeah, it takes about um, 12 to 15 minutes to walk from the bottom all the way up to the top. Um, so... Uh, and I know if you're running around it, it's good for a workout, maybe about two miles doing a circuit around the school. Um, yeah, but if you guys are walking around, you can get to any of your classes in like seven minutes. So that's probably about, it sounds like Drew is about the size of, of Kingsburg. So if you were to walk from our school to the boardwalk, it's basically about walking the same distance between uh, from one side of the campus to the other. And it would never take you would never walk all the way across to go to class, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you you kind would of be, cut through the center. Yeah, you can cut right through the center, and you would be there a lot quicker. So Definitely. That, that's a good question. I mean, there okay. are some places where you can live where it takes only one minute to walk to class. Wow. Oh yeah. That's it. Then you can sleep a little later when you're there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Riley, ask the next one there because I'm curious to find this one out. So how do most people get around the campus at Drew? Oh, how do most people get around on campus? Yeah. Do um, most students well, a lot walk of students or? like a lot of students walk, but I'll tell you that skateboards are really popular. <laughs> all our campus is all on a hill, so all of your dorms are at the top, except for maybe one or two, like I said, that are one minute away from classes. And there's a hill going all the way down. So you get so many students who pull out their skateboards and just roll down the hill on the way to campus, on the way to class. We have a lot of bikes, tons of students bicycling all the time. You can walk up your bike at any of our school buildings. Um, and you do see occasionally a pair of rollerblades, but that's kind of rare. I, I have to ask you this only because it's every school that we've interviewed so far has let us know that they are starting to now see unicycles on campus. Oh, whoa. Really? <laughs> yes. Has, has that made its way to Drew yet? I haven't seen a unicycle yet, but I'm sure we will. <laughs> Um, I actually knew a friend that had one when I was a freshman, but they didn't use it to get to class. They just used it to, like, play on. <laughs> Excellent. Go ahead, Riley. What are your most majors? What are your most popular majors at Drew? Okay, so psychology is really big, so learning about the brain and how that works. Um, political science, learning about the government and going into New York City to meet with all of those delegates from other countries is really popular. Theater can be really popular on campus. We have a really rigorous theater program. You get to direct, you get to act, you get to build the set, you get to put on the music. It's great. Um, let's see. And we have uh, English is always really popular too. We have a lot of writers on campus. Um, so those would, those would probably be our top four, and business is our, our, in our top five as well. If you want to learn about Wall Street or how to run a company, that's also a really big one. All right, Ryan? What is the cost of school? So here's the big question. What is the cost to attend Drew University? The cost is about $55,000 a year for wow. tuition and fees. Now, that leads us right into the next question, though, Ryan. Does your school offer scholarships? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So there's several different ways you can um, you can get that number taken down. So we have merit-based scholarships. So if you're a really good student 
and you have a really good GPA and you did worked really hard in school, that you can get a really nice scholarship from us. Um, our top scholarship for a student with a 4.0 is I think about twenty or twenty one hundred dollars. So twenty thousand wow. dollars would be one of our top scholarships. If you're an honors student, which you know if you have a four point you're probably going to be recommended for our honors program. That's another one thousand five hundred dollars. So already our tuition is almost cut in half for yeah. you. Um, but on top of that, we have the need based aid. So you can also fill out a government document called a FAFSA, where you get to. Um, We'll give you state and federal money <laughs> um, so that you get even more help to come to Drew. And, of course, we give out our own money trying to help you guys make it here. So last year we gave out about $27 million, I believe, of our own money. Wow. Yeah, because we really we really like to help people be able to, to come here and have an awesome, awesome experience. And we have other scholarship programs, too, that are all uh, about $5,000 a year, and you can apply for more than one of them. Um, we've got one if you're interested in doing research and science. So if you want to build, you know, if you want to be an engineer and build things, or if you want to work in a lab and do research on a disease like cancer or Alzheimer's, um, you know, we've got a great program for that. We also have one if you want to go out and do community service and work with nonprofit organizations and help people on a day-to-day -day basis, we have one for you. Our Civic Engagement Scholarship Program, also $5,000 a year. And we have one if you just love to sing, or if you love to paint, or draw, or do theater. We've got another scholarship. Or if you like to write. So So it seems like pretty much if you have an interest when you're getting ready to apply to Drew, chances are you may be eligible for a scholarship. Oh, yes. Most now, definitely. I have a question about your admission standards. We've talked to a lot of different schools, and a lot of different schools have different standards for admission. Mm -hmm. Is yours strictly an academic-based admissions, or do you kind of take a look at... What kind of stuff do you do in school? Are you an athlete? Are you in clubs? Do you organize things? Do you take that holistic approach when selecting we, students? We do, absolutely. Because um, I told you, Drew loves students to get out in the real world and go work their jobs while they're students. And we love people who are um, passionate about everything. So, because I'm sure all of you guys have things you like, right? And they're all probably different. Yep. So. Drew doesn't want to just look at how you do in school. We want to look at, you know, everything you're doing. What are you really passionate about? Um, what do you want to focus on when you come here? So it's really important to us that we have students who are interested in a wide variety of things. Because, you know, we're so get out there and put themselves out there and do a lot. Excellent. Go ahead, Ryan. Now... You, the question is, do you have any famous alumni? Now, so, James Earl Jones, how many of you guys have seen Star Wars? I always how many of you like Star Wars? I do. I love Star Wars. Um, so, there's a guy named James Earl Jones who played Darth Vader. He played the voice for Darth Vader. You know the guy who goes, <laughs> you know that sound he makes? <laughs> okay, so that guy went to drill. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Now, also, James Vanderbeek, who wrote a show on television for years that you've probably never seen, Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Went to Drew. Um, yeah, we, the teachers know him. Oh, good. Okay. Now, now, I do have to say, you have a very famous alumni who works here in Keensburg for these kids. And what was her name, Ryan? Miss Mignoli, who is one of our, she's now a vice principal at our, at our middle school, uh, who was Ryan's teacher for the past two years and, and really kind of pushed Drew on all of her students because she had such a <laughs> wonderful experience there. So she's probably our most famous, your most famous alumni here at, in yes. Keensburg. Most likely. <laughs> Go ahead, Ryan. Now, being that you are a Drew uh, alumni and now work for the university, what do you like most about Drew? The teachers. I love all my teachers, and they all remembered me when I came back to work here. They stopped me all the time to talk to me and see how I'm doing, um, and it, that has to be my number one. My teachers are awesome. Oh, I hope you guys feel that way, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's ask. Let's open it up. Do you guys have any questions? Go ahead, Joe. Do you, do you like, do you, which one do you like best, walking, 
How would you, what do, which, which way do you like best about getting around campus? Oh man, I like walking because I, that way I don't have to take the paths, you know, sometimes I can get to class faster <laughs> <laughs> because I can cut across a field. Um, no, but I mean, I like bicycling, but the hill is really steep on the way back up. So it's kind of hard to make it back up to the dorms. <laughs> Any other questions? Go ahead, JP. Um, Um, is your classroom upstairs? Yeah, how about your school? Is it one floor or are there lots of levels for the schools? There's a lot of levels. It depends on your building. Most of our buildings for classes are two stories high. So you get one set of stairs to go up. Um, but we have basements in some of them with computer centers. And if you're doing research, we've got classes where, you know, um, you're looking at animals if you're in the pre-vet program. So things like that where we have a bunch of rats that we keep. We have a third floor for that. Um, like our observatory, if you like to go stargazing, we have an observatory where you can look at the night sky. And that's on a third floor, too. Excellent. Now, I have to ask you this question. At the sporting events, does Drew have any special cheers that people cheer? Oh, wow. It varies year to year. It definitely does. We've got students making up new cheers every year. Because <laughs> we, we have some Drew signs here. You guys can hold them up. Go ahead. And we want to learn a, a Drew cheer. So when, we, when we're when we here in our school, we could do the, the Drew cheer when we're walking around here. So what's a good one we could do? Oh, my gosh. Wow, you're really putting me on the spot here. It's been a few years. <laughs> um, Should we just say, go Rangers? <laughs> go Rangers is a good one. Um, there was always one that ended in... Uh, Drew, 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 but I can't remember how it started. Um, and then there's the classic defense, defense, Drew, Drew, Drew. All right, you guys ready to try that one? Okay, so it's going to go defense, defense, and when you say Drew, 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 shake your signs up. You ready? Here we go. Defense, defense. Drew, Drew, Drew. How's that? Yay, great job. All Those right. Are good. Ms. Kaylin, I thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know it was a slippery morning this morning, kind of coming into work with that snow, but uh, everything worked out. You were super, super wonderful with the kids.